You guys asked for it, and so I delivered. Today is the first day, episode 1, of our speedrun account to 2400. I hope you guys enjoy, because it's going to be a long series, but it'll definitely be a fun one. Coming straight up. Let's get started and have the first game. Alright, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make it so that I'm playing people 50 rating above or 50 rating below. So I'm not going to be playing 2,000 rated people to get my rating from 1,000 to 2,300 ish. Uh, that wouldn't really make much sense now, would it? So I'm going to just create a challenge. We can do 3 minute, 5 minute, 10 minutes. Really doesn't matter. Let's start with some 5 minute chess. See how uh, it goes, basically. So. Let's begin with an e4 opening. My opponent's playing Scandinavian. Now, a lot of people like playing knight c3 variations, but to me, I really like these um, early knight f3 variations because the idea is I get to play pawn c4, gain a lot of space in the center, and life is really good. And so I really like these positions because, well, my opponent could make moves like this, which is very interesting. I actually did not expect a move like this. Actually, should I just play this move? Knight c3 looks pretty good. And the thing is, I could just take this pawn, take, take, but I'm scared of like here. So let's play knight c3, attack that queen. Don't allow him to check over here. And then we can threaten to take here. Now, of course, he could always just play bishop b4, which makes a lot of sense by him. But here, at least, it gives my opponent more of a chance to mess up. So here, I could capture, I could push as well. Um, I think we capture here with a pawn, and then we have this move, bishop b5 check, which is quite interesting here. Check over here, pawn c6, knight takes here, and then do we have any tactics afterwards, after he captures back there with his pawn? Not really, but he does have a... He does lack in center, so you know what? He not only lacks in center, he lacks in development as well. So let's play something like this, bishop b5 check, we gain a tempo. If he plays here, I could always capture here, which is already pretty good for me. But let's just castle here. Threaten rookie one check. I mean, rookie one check. What is he going to do? He's probably going to block with his knight, right? Maybe bishop. Yep. Let's capture here. Let's play queen here to defend our bishop and attack that g7 square. So he captures there. Now the question is, do I can, let's capture back with pawn. My opponent's still not castled, which is an issue for him. Now by playing this, it allows me to play bishop g5, threatening to capture his knight over here. It's a good move. He's threatening to, um, well, he's threatening my queen. Could play here. Do you think taking here is a good idea? Yeah, um, probably not, but it looks fun. Then again, uh, let's just play queen here. Just try to undouble our pawns. Don't let him to castle. Pawn structure is really good. He plays that move. Now, I wanted to play knight here, but I realize he can always just um, capture there, which is an issue for me. So, what do we want to do? Do we just capture here? Capture there, play like play like knight over here. It looks pretty good. He still can't castle in this position. And I am threatening to capture here, threatening to capture there. There's pins everywhere. It's kind of annoying for my opponent, to be honest. I mean, I even have rook sacrifices to, um, that I can play here. Now I can do queen check here and win a pawn there. Let's do it. Yes, queen has to go back. And I win the pawn here. And I can capture here next. Yep. And I create double pawns here. And I can move towards the center. Get a very nice... Um, make sure that my pawns are undoubled. His pawns are very bad. And even if he doesn't want to trade, that's fine. I'm just going to move my A pawn all the way up. I am up a pawn. Need to make sure that these guys are all defended though. They are, so I can just start pushing this pawn all the way to victory. So, let's begin. I guess he can play rook here. Mm, not really that annoying here. 
Let's play queen check here. I guess we can take there. Now, can my opponent threaten anything annoying? Not really. Let's just capture here. Let's play queen back here if he plays something like there. Or if he makes a mistake like this, I can do a back rank checkmate against him. Now, my opponent actually played quite well for 1000 rated. Didn't expect this. Um, now, it said I made a couple blunders. Let's go through these games, actually, even if, if the game is much lower rated. Then my actual, uh, usual games, well, it's very good. It's very important for us to analyze. Like, this guy's really good for his rating, for sure. I wasn't expecting something like this for our, our beginning. Now, let's hope we don't mess up any games in the future like this. That'd be kind of silly. Let's see. All right, so we didn't really make any big blunders. We were just winning for the entirety of this game. So let's see. Um, knight c3, capturing there. I mean, ooh, capturing there apparently wasn't good. Perhaps just bishop here? Bishop here just attacking that? Possibly could make sense. I guess we could press analysis, see what happens. So here... Bishop takes c6, it says rook e5 is the best move, and that's an interesting best move actually, because it threatens to take here if you take here, and it's actually quite annoying, like what does our opponent do, does he just move his queen away? It's possible that might be his only move in this position, but after something like queen b6, we could always play something like bishop e3 to attack the queen, and it's actually running out of squares, which I, I can understand why this move is so good. Alright, so... What others? It's just tactical mistakes. We just played this game very well. Um, so let's let's go for another one. Let's do another five mini game. All right. So let's play a Scotch Gambit, one of my favorite openings. All right. Let's capture here. If he plays here, one of the variations I like to play is Bishop here. Is it the best variation? It might not be, but it's trying to go for this silly queen idea in which we're threatening checkmate. Our opponent doesn't see it then we can just win now my question is can we not just do that right now i think we can we can just play queen here threaten and checkmate and then we can just capture here or something like that now our opponent could play bishop e6 we capture here pawn d5 which i suppose makes a little bit of sense here so let's see what our opponent does here I think it's the only way, really. I mean, after this, we just checkmate him on f7. And which is one of the reasons why I think this opening was very str very strong, especially at the lower levels, is because many of your opponents won't know the variations, so they'll mess up early. You can just get an easy win. I don't know how many games, even at 1800, 1900 level, people just blundering like this in actual over-the-board games. Now, my opponent plays d6. It's kind of like a Philidor. It is a Philidor. And so one of the main principles against these openings, you just gain as much space as possible and then just make do with what you have in the middle game and just try to think. Now my opponent kind of went AFK, but let's hope he comes back so we can um, basically have a good time, basically show you guys how I beat people around 1000 rated. Now I guess beating them by winning on time is one way, but that's not the main way I try to beat people at this level. And while we're at it, um, let me talk to you guys. So my question for you guys and today is, um, what rating are you guys at, right? I want to know what the rating most of my viewers are right now to see how I can help, well, the people that I want to help, well, the most. So in this position, my opponent's just attacking e4, so I'm just going to defend it. I really don't like queen e7 ideas because, well, it's, it's in a silly position. Now, my opponent does this. He plays b5, which actually is a pretty, not, it's not a bad move. Because I can't actually capture here because, well, there's a pin. Now the question is, can I just castle? Castle and play rook e8. Is that possible? I think it's possible. I mean, why not? Let's just do it. Is it the best move? Possibly not. We could play, yeah, let's just castle whatever. Let's just play rook e8. Rook e1. He can't capture my bishop, otherwise he captured the queen. My opponent's quite lacking development here, which is always an issue, especially at the lower levels. So here, um, do I just play bishop g5? I guess, I mean, bishop g5 pinning the knight, we're threatening to capture here with our knight. Seems pretty good to me. Seems pretty good. I mean, here I just capture here and I have to capture there, right? 
seems to be the case. And now we're threatening here, and our opponent's king is not castled at all. Now, I suppose you could say this is castling, but castling into a um, very sketchy position, let's say that. I guess we just capture here, threatening to capture his queen, so he can't really capture back here. We're also threatening some bishop a6 ideas. Opponent's in a little bit of a tough situation. Now, there's a maiden two. Usually I would just get you guys to help me answer this one, but this one's a little bit simple. Since I did mention the idea before, now checkmate in one. Now let's see if we can do any cool checkmates. Nah, I was thinking something like cool checkmates like this, but it doesn't work. We can just checkmate him over here. So here, like, you'll see this in a lot in a lot of your games, especially the 1000 level. People don't really castle very quickly, or they don't castle when they need to, which is the important part. Now, when do you castle? I have a video that's very good on that, like when to actually castle at any level. And so in this position, my opponent's just trying to win a pawn, which is the wrong idea, especially in the opening, especially when I got so much development, so much tempo. And there really, really wasn't much my opponent can do there. So, all right, so it's my first black game here. So mm, let's play Sicilian. It's an aggressive opening. I don't really recommend Philidor, like, until you're maybe 1600-ish. Because why, why go through the pain? So, Sicilian is much more aggressive opening. You're fighting for the center. You get some nice bishop control, especially in dragon-like positions. There's not much not to like in dragons. And it's just a good opening for you guys to play if you're just starting out. Alright, let's just play bishop here. Nice diagonal. Let's play pawn d6. Don't allow his pawn to move to e5 when I move my knight here. I mean, he wants to pin me, uh, it's fine, I'll just block. Not really much of a problem for me. I mean, we're just going to play simple chess all the way up to, um, well, maybe even 2000 level-ish, because there's really no need to go for these big brain 3000 IQ strategies, especially at this level over here. Just develop my pieces, play normally. What's my opponent going to do, am I right? I mean, this position, I already like my position quite a bit. I like my bishop compared to this bishop, right? This bishop's not really doing much. And, well, I have two center pawns. I have a Fianchetto bishop. My king's not under attack. I have an open c file I can use to attack in the future. And here my opponent allows me to take on e4. He doesn't see that my threat was here, so I guess I'm just going to capture here. Center pawns are indeed pretty good for your health. And a lot of people don't prioritize their um, center pawns, which I find very confusing. Like, people actually just don't care about the center pawns, which makes me wonder, like, why? I mean, if I can take this bishop, I just have an unopposed bishop over here, which is super duper strong. All right, let's just castle, make sure our king is safe. That's something you should always prioritize, no matter what the position is. No matter how much material you're up, Always make sure your king is safe, because that's one way you can always lose, right? You don't want to lose that way. So, we're up material, so exchange of pieces is something that I want to do. When you're up material, big piece of advice is try to exchange as many pieces as possible. So here, I'm okay with him exchanging me, because guess what? I have two amazing bishops. So if my opponent's smart, he'll probably just move his um, bishop back somewhere. If he moves there, I can gain more space here. Just have a good time. Let's play knight e5 in the future. Just try to trade off more pieces. And I can even get my bishop on c6 still. This way. We can get our queen to b6 as well. Pressure that. Pressure here. Let's put our pieces on nice squares. Now do I want to just play pawn b5 here? That's the real question probably. I mean just gain more space, right? Or should I just play rook c8? Eh, let's just play rook c8. Just to develop here. No need to create more weaknesses than I need to. We have the c4 score, which is very important in some Sicilians. Well, many Sicilians. Let's just plop our knight over here. Force him to really exchange, because in Sicilians, the dark square bishop for our opponent is usually much more important than the light square bishop, because my bishop on g7 is super duper important here. Let's plop it there. We're threatening there. We're capturing here as well. So our opponent captures, which makes sense. We're threatening some checks over here. Our rook's very active. We're going to play pawn b5. And maybe bishop here and bishop back. Put our bishop on a nice diagonal. Alright, let's play um, pawn to b5. Solidify our rook on this very nice square. Now, our opponent can't move here because then we just capture it. So this knight's kind of sad. We can just 
create start an attack on our opponent's king over here. Now, of course, we can't just play rook there immediately. That's kind of silly, but maybe in the future. Now, the question is, how I play here, can my rook get trapped? The answer is probably, so let, let's not fall for any silly tricks, right? Um, should I play f5 ideas? I mean, that exposes this diagonal, which is not something you really want to do. As I said before, I really just want to exchange pieces. You know what, let's just move the rook back. I don't want to mess up in any way whatsoever. And that's a good piece of advice. When you're winning, there's no need to rush things. Just make sure all your pieces are nice squares and then win from there. So he wants to exchange there, and guess what? I'm completely fine with that. As I said before, exchanging pieces is always to the advantage of the person who's up material. Well, generally, of course. He's going to play knight here. Nice square for the knight. He might just check me, but then I'll play pawn e5. I like this bishop on this nice diagonal that's actually important now, because my opponent's king is here. All right, let's play pawn e5, actually. Block this, and sure, you create a weak d6 a piece, but you actually create an avenue here. I can defend it like here. If at the very worst, I can push the pawn up forwards. So I actually like this idea. Let's try it. So he's playing there. Let's play queen g5. See if my opponent messes up and forgets about his g2 pawn and takes my d6 pawn. If he plays g3, there's some dark score and light score weaknesses he has there. So not something you really want to see as somebody playing on the white side over here. This e5 square is also pretty good because it stops our opponent from moving here. Now let's put our um, rook over here, just defend that. Opponent might play f4, but then his king's really exposed. Not sure if he really wants that. Hmm. So he moves there. It's interesting because that knight's now kind of out of the game. I want to move my bishop over here and play like pawn e5, just solidify my bishop over here and the his weak leg -like squares. I'm just going to try to enter his position like queen here and like queen there. What's my opponent going to do? His knight's not doing anything. And this is the power of the bishop as well. Like, look at this bishop compared to this knight. It's actually kind of depressing over there. That knight on a5. So, let's see what my opponent does. He's trying to exchange pieces, which makes a lot of sense. Now, the question is, do I want to exchange? Yes, because it doubles his pawns. I'm up material, and this... Knight is getting quarantined over here, just like we all are right now. Can't actually go anywhere useful. So do we just push this pawn? We push. Can he move his knight here and be annoying? He could, but it doesn't actually do anything, so I'm fine with it. Let's just push this. Try to take advantage. Let's get a rook over here or something in the future. If we can, that'd be very good for us. Opponent can't take advantage of this file over here, which is kind of unlucky for him. He moves there. Now the question is, do I just want to play here, or do I want to play here or play f6? Play here, his knight can go here, f6. Mm, could be annoying in the future. e5 allows my rook to swing in this way. Uh, what, what if we just move here, though? Here, then he might move his knight there. Then we can just move our rook here, and life seems pretty good. So let's do this. Make sure we don't get forked. That would be kind of annoying. Not something you want to see either. If this knight moves, I can always just move rook here, which is a very good square for me, because not only can I check, but I can try to win this h5 pawn as well. So he moves there. Now, the question is, can I move here without creating, without falling for any silly tricks? And the answer is yes, because knight there doesn't work, even though it's a fork, because I can just check over here, which is nice. You know what? Let's do it. It's going to play knight here. I'm going to check. Maybe capture the pawn after I move like here. Let's do a check here. Let's play rook there. King's not in the best of spots, let's say that. Let's play rook here. I can threaten right to capture this knight. You better move back somewhere. I don't know where you're going to go. And my opponent resigned. Alright, so not a bad game here indeed. So after that first warm-up game, all the games have been going quite smoothly. Quite smoothly indeed. Let's play pawn d6. Let's play Philidor. It's one of the openings I did tell you guys. Um, I have taught you guys how to play, so let's show you guys how to play against someone lower rated. Even though it's probably not the best opening for um, you guys to start off with a 900 rated to 1000 rated, but it's solid. Definitely solid. 
Now let's play bishop e7. Now you might wonder, uh, isn't this bishop better on c4 or c5 than on e7? Yeah, technically, but I really do like my bishops being on e7 as it allows me to, um, well, how do I say it? it? It basically gives it potential so I can bring it out in the future. And that's what I really like about having a bishop on e7, especially since it's closer to the opponent. Um, oh, that's a weird move my opponent just made. I guess I'll just capture it. Can I play c6? Nah, let's not. Let's keep my dark square bishop here. Let's play pawn c6. As you guys know, in the Philidor, one of the main ideas is to play pawn b5, which my opponent gives me for free, so I'll take it. And let's just castle now. We can always move our knight here in the future. He plays here. Let's just play pawn b5. Make sure that his bishop is set. Our knight has a nice square on e5. On c5, it can use. Not anymore, but it was a nice square. I guess we just capture here. Let's play queen c7 and play like bishop f6 next. Sure, my opponent has a strong center, but it's actually not that good, I don't think. Because my opponent's not castle, I get to play bishop f6, have a nice diagonal for my bishop, have knight c5, a nice square for my knight. So, um, actually, I can play pawn d5 in these positions um, because after he castles. Now, it's a, it's a... No, let's not do that. Let's play bishop f6. I like bishop f6 in this position. My opponent sacrifices his pawn here, which is interesting. It's captured then captured back for the bishop, and then we can thread an h2 as well. Or we can capture the knight. I think the knight's a little bit trickier and better because we have some ideas of playing knight here check and winning the queen. Let's go for this. Bishop f4 is kind of interesting. Now my opponent says he doesn't want to get scammed here, which makes sense. I wouldn't want to get scammed either. Um, now let's play bishop here. Or should I just move... Yeah, let's play bishop there and play pawn c5. Or if I play bishop here, you can play pawn here. But then I can always just attack that c5 pawn, so that's fine. But then move like queen e5, or maybe just queen here. Or just knight back, actually. Knight back first. What if bishop f4, though? That's annoying. Though we are up material. No, yeah, knight here attacking that pawn. Bishop f4, bishop e5. Play bishop e5. As I said before, trade pieces when you're up material. And in this position, I am indeed up material. Slow and steady wins the race, my friends. You might play bishop c2 trying to scam me here, but don't want to deal with that. Let's just try to trade pieces. He has to exchange here, otherwise I just win that pawn here for free. And then after he castles, I can play knight here, which I think, interestingly enough, actually wins this pawn over here. Alright, I guess we're going to go for it. Oh wait, he can play rook here, I guess. Suppose that's an option, but then I can play pawn here, chase that rook away. That rook doesn't have many squares, then if he plays rook here, I play pawn h6. And yeah. It's funny, because his rook can't actually go there. And I don't think he really has many counterattacks here. So, yep, I take that pawn over here. Now, I could play bishop a6 and trade off more pieces. Let's play pawn a5. Or do I want to play bishop a6? Then something like pawn c5. You know what? As I said before, just trade off pieces when you're ahead. I'm up two pawns now, which is better than one pawn. So, let's do this. Do, 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 do. See what my opponent does. Just keep exchanging pieces and don't get back crank mated. And we should win this game. Now let's push this pawn up. Tell that knight to go away. Maybe plop my knight to e6 in the future where it's much, much, much stronger. Now, again, just like last game, as I said before, always got to be careful of those... Um, Knight forks. Because knight forks, one knight fork and it's over for you. Alright, let's move here. I was expecting him to check over here, but 
Yes, you could check over there. All right, let's move this guy over here. Let's move this knight back into the game where it's useful. Where it's defending this very important pawn we have over here. It's our weakest pawn for sure. Now let's play rook here. Don't want him to get, just get an open file just for free, right? Let's see what my opponent does here. He exchanges probably to play knight e5 to attack my pawn, but then I can always play like f6 ideas. I mean, f6, knight there is kind of annoying. What if I play rook f8? Then he can just um, be a bit more annoying, actually. Um, actually, let's play pawn f6. I don't want to give him activity. I'm up a pawn. Let's play here. He plays there. I can move my rook down here, which is annoying for him. Because having a rook on the second is super duper strong. And especially if he captures you, I gain the tempo. Now here I can up a sant. A lot of people forget about this at this level. They consider it cheating. But I can promise you, this is not a cheating type of move. If your opponent moves up twice, then you can just capture here. Alright, let's just move this pawn here. Throw it into promote. Plop my knight down over here on a very nice square. Move my rook here. Plop it over there. My opponent kind of has to play like h3, otherwise I play rook here, rook there. Alright, I guess I'm playing rook here, rook there. And we win, because our opponent can't get his king off this back rank. Now we check. He has to capture us, otherwise he's just down a rook and we still promote. And now we get this knight as well. We're out of material, make sure there's no stalemate. And we can just easily win from there. All right, let's have one more game today. Very simple game. So we just want a couple pawns because a lot of people just blunder pawns at this level. You just capture those pawns that they give you. And once you capture those pawns, well, then it's easy sailings from there. Just trade off pieces. Literally, that's all I've been doing. I haven't been playing any big brain Magnus Carlsen moves. Also because I can't play big brain Magnus Carlsen moves, but also because there's no need for you guys to play such complicated moves. So... All right, let's play here. Very important to attack e4, so he can't just move his c pawn all the way to c4. And technically, I'm a knight orf player in these positions, but I think much simpler for beginners, especially to understand. People under like 2,000 is just playing your dragon. Playing the dragon is good, especially if your opponent's playing bishop e5 variation. It's not the most optimal. I think right now the most optimal, most playable version is the Yugoslav attack. Just attack that um, um, black king over and over and over again. So here, my opponent plays here. Let's just play knight c6. Get my pieces on nice squares. Now, e5 doesn't work because capture, capture, and you might think, oh, oh wait, I guess if I capture here, um, he can capture my queen, and then this is actually some annoying pawn structure, actually. Huh. Can I play d5? Now, the question is, can I just capture here? All right, you know what? Let's just capture here. Whatever, it's fine. This position is definitely not optimal for me. I can promise you that. It, I definitely messed up somewhere. Wait, can I play here? Capture, capture, capture. No, I cannot. It does not work like that. I mean, here, if he captures it, can I play pawn e6 and try to trap him? I mean, I could always try, right? Don't think that castle and coin side was very optimal for him because now he has some troubles. So of course you could just capture here and then play knight there. But then I can play bishop here and that knight, that bishop's still trapped over here. Alright, let's see what our opponent can do to try to think of a way out of this situation he got himself into. I mean, this position is probably not even bad even if I don't win this because I can always just plop a knight here and then if he captures me, then I can up undouble everything, have a strong center, I'm not down material. And as you guys can see, I don't really play many tactics in games or, or even think of any tactics because, especially at this level, um, what's more important than you doing big brain tactics or like Nakamura-like tactics is basically just make your opponent mess up his tactics. Alright, so my opponent, I think, just gave up on his bishop, so... Because half the time, the tactics your opponents try to make don't work, as you guys can have seen throughout the other games I've played. Kind of funny if I do say so myself, the gameplay. 
All right, so here he's trying to double up, but once you're up material, guess what, guys? Well, huh. I guess in the future videos, I guess in the future speedrun videos, I can just make you guys, you know, think for yourselves for a bit. Basically tell you guys to pause your videos if I see a tactic and get you guys to calculate them yourself. I think that would be pretty cool. 95, king here, no pin. I mean, there is a pin, but no problem. More like it. But the question is, what did I mess up? Oh, uh, all right. Let's just move here, make sure, no problem. H6, knight captures there. Is that annoying? No, let's just play bishop here. Tell that knight to go away. See if we can trade pieces here. Trade pieces, win game, am I right? All right, now we just trade pieces as I said before. Now we have a bishop. Now, one thing that's very important, when I say trade pieces, what's important to know is, what I mean is don't trade um, pawns. The more pawns you trade, the easier it is for your opponent to get a draw. So let's just provoke some weaknesses from my opponents. Yep, recreating some weaknesses here. And now let's try to penetrate the position, king c5. Maybe I should have played bishop here. Whatever. Make do with what we have. We're uh, just on material, so not really much our opponent can do here. Make sure our opponent can't just enter our position for free willy nilly. Funny thing is, if I move here and he tries to enter our position, I can just play bishop here and it actually blocks his three squares to enter our position. So he's actually quite sad there. Um, makes sense. Um, Do I just want to wiggle my way in here? That'd be kind of funny, but I guess we could. Let's play king here. Make sure we're not blundering anything silly. Of course, if he moves here, we move there. And if he moves back, we check him. So you play this, and we're going to move our king over here. We're going to just try to outflank our opponent here, because we really have an extra piece here, so it's nothing to really fear. This is really good for us. Really good for us. <laughs> Interesting move. Let's move our king here, attack that c2 pawn. The more pawns he puts on dark squares, the better for me. So I should have probably just played a6 instead of this king move over here. That's okay, though. All right, let's move the bishop back here. If he plays that, then... What do we do, actually? Huh, did I mess up a bit? Actually, I might have. So let's move our bishop here. I should have played a6, so then my bishop can always target that. But that's okay. Alright, so our opponent gives us the pawn here. So I was waiting for a zigzag-like position, which this basically was. Our opponent moves here, then we can have uh, another pawn on the dark side for us to attack. So now, I don't think our opponent really has anything. Now we just try to win this pawn, and then promote this guy over here. Yeah, this doesn't really do anything much for our opponent, because this bishop is protecting our a7 pawn for the rest of his days. Not much our opponent can do. Not too much our opponent can do. And we won. And now we're at 1050 rating. Not bad. So we still are on a complete win streak. I'll make I'll keep a tally of how many um, games we actually won and how many games we were losing all the way up to like 2300, which is our final goal. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, make sure to like and subscribe. And what rating do you think I'll make it to before I lose my first game or draw my first game? Tell me in the comment section below. And I'll make sure to cat, um, to comment and uh, like your uh, comment in the next video. See ya.